So recently, the NRA, that is the National Restaurant Association, ran a poll to see where the American people are at on the issue of raising the minimum wage. Uh, now, I said, of course, I believe that we should have a living wage, but unfortunately, that was not addressed in this questionnaire since it was put forward by the nation's or one of the nation's most powerful lobbying groups that lobby against the minimum wage. Now, they fought the idea, of course, raising the wage and a minimum wage for decades. Now, after some of the victories uh, from groups like Five for 15 uh, and activists, and the fact that Bernie Sanders, who ran on instituting a $15 uh, living wage, is actually the most popular politician in America, the NRA decided to reach out to a Republican pollster. That's Frank Luntz, of course. He's very well known uh, as one of the biggest uh, Republican pollsters to commission a specific survey. Now, the results of this survey has the Restaurant Association flipping the fuck out. For that, I go to an article written in The Intercept by um, Zid Jelani and Lisa Graves. Uh, by the way, happy birthday, Zid Jelani. Uh, now, they wrote, The poll, which was presented on a slide deck obtained by The Intercept and documented, found that 7 in 10 Americans want to see the minimum wage raised even if it means that they would have to pay more for the meals. Now, that is very interesting because that's one of the arguments that uh, politicians that are not in favor of raising the wage often use and the restaurant industry itself. Well, they're just going to pass the costs on to you. I mean, now your burger is going to be 10 to 20 cents more expensive. Of course, they go crazy and your burger is going to cost $10 and 49 cents. No, it's not. Look at the economies of scale. I mean, if you're a franchise or if you're a big giant corporation, then those costs are going to be spread a little bit more evenly, uh, those increased costs of employment. So, it, but still, almost three quarters of, American, uh, uh, of Americans poll say, we don't care. We want to make sure that uh, the people that are making our food are able to live. Again, uh-oh, <laughs> they're not happy about this. Uh, now, it also found, and, and as I just mentioned, that the various talking points used by the industry to uh, try to get people to not be in favor of the minimum wage, uh, or raising the minimum wage, I should say, are not effective with the public. Now, as I said before, the poll found that about 71% of people surveyed support raising the minimum wage to at least $10 an hour, even if it means that they will incur more costs uh, in order to, to, to pay that wage. Now, that's an overwhelming majority. Now, that said, I believe in a living wage, as I said, $15 an hour at least. And look, to make the case that it needs to be raised more, let's sort of compare it to how much people at uh, these various fast food uh, industry or fast food chains make millions and millions of dollars. In fact, even the National Restaurant Association CEO makes millions and millions of dollars. In fact, the NRA had paid its own CEO, Don Sweeney, more than $3.8 million in total compensation. That includes a bonus of $1.7 million. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, Jelani notes, that if her total compensation were computed to be an hourly wage, they would make one thousand eight hundred and sixty-eight. Uh, I'm sorry, eight thousand six. One thousand eight hundred sixty-seven dollars and eighty-eight cents per hour, if of course it was adjusted to inflation about four years ago. So, that would take a minimum wage worker at seven twenty-five an hour, two hundred and forty-seven hours or six weeks of full-time work to earn. Imagine your shift for the week being six weeks long. So, damn, that's full-time work. A lot of people working in fast food, they don't get full-time. They get 20 hours a week, 24 hours a week, 32 a week. So, I mean, that's a lot of money. Now, there's more. Um... 
let's go to the messaging, right? And how their messages are not resonating with the American people. Now, one of the arguments, of course, made by industry executives is that, hey, man, look, you're going to raise costs. Well, I mentioned that earlier, right? Overwhelming majority of Americans are saying we would pay more to support a fair wage. Now, the pollster specifically asked this question. If you had to choose, you would say that government or the government should increase the federal minimum wage, even if it also increases the cost of food and services to customers. 71% of Americans said absolutely. Now, in the words of Lance Global, they said, quote, they want the increase in spite of the costs. Again, Americans are like, yes. Go ahead and charge me a little bit more from a burger. That, as long as it allows somebody who is working to not be in poverty, so they can actually have a better standard of living. And look, the increase in costs, by the way, uh, are beneficial for the American taxpayer. Let me explain. Um, so, if you have people that are actually making a wage that they can live off of, then that's going to reduce the need for welfare programs. See, if you have people making more money and actually being able to live on that money, they wouldn't need food stamps. They wouldn't need Medicaid. So that would actually save taxpayer money. Fascinating, right? At least that's how the, the, the general thinking goes. So I think that argument is actually really effective when it comes to regular people who don't quite understand how the economy works, but sort of in general, right? Now... Uh, in reality, of course, you don't need taxes to fund spending, uh, but we're still basically in the mindset that no one taxes fund things like welfare. And so, you know, we, we need to make sure that we fund that welfare uh, system. And if we if we can save money on that by cutting the welfare, then we save money on taxes. But anyway, again, that's generally how it works. I'm not going to go too off uh, into MMT uh, right now. Anyway. Now, uh, Jelani also notes that even though the lunch survey shows that restaurant customers are willing to pay more, the linked poll shows the messaging the NRA is continuing to deploy to try and stop measures to raise the minimum wage. That includes the claim that restaurants will go out of business if the minimum wage goes up. Now, that's very interesting, right? So, I, I bring that up now and point that out now. Because you know the recent argument. Oh, if you raise the minimum wage, well, you're going to go and, and, and uh, have to raise costs on the customers. So that right there is one of the arguments they use. Well, if they use that argument, they also cannot be able to use, well, the business will go out of business. But wait, it doesn't make sense. Because if the costs are passed to the consumer and the consumer eats those costs, then the business isn't losing money by paying their workers more. So the idea that, oh, these businesses are going to go out of business doesn't track with the other argument, and it kind of defeats that argument of, well, I mean, they're going to uh, go out of business if they raise the costs uh, for labor, and they're also going to pass the cost to you. Well, if they pass the cost to you, then there is no additional cost to the company. Therefore, they're not going to go out of business. You see what I'm saying? They just undercut their own fucking argument. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, now, here's something that I didn't quite expect, and that's the framing around the issue. Um, as I said before, 71% of Americans say, yes, we need an increase in the minimum wage immediately. Now, why? It goes into why. The article notes the strongest polling message in the poll was on standard of living. They said a minimum wage increase will improve people's standard of living by providing them with a more appropriate income level to handle cost of living increases. So now that argument turns out to be very effective uh, with the majority of the American people in a uh, poll. 43% um, of respondents found that to be the most persuasive message following by the finding that raising the minimum wage would help lift nearly 17 million Americans out of poverty, despite working full-time. Now, that's surprising. I actually would have thought lifting the po people out of poverty argument would be more effective. Nonetheless, 
I guess people are more thinking about others' standard of living instead of poverty, right? So that's good because, in a way, because Americans say that if you believe that if you work, or they believe that if you work, you deserve a decent living, a decent standard of living. And look, when you look at our work-obsessed culture, that kind of makes sense, right? Now, there's another strong argument, according to the league poll, uh, that was used, and they said that the raise is needed to help with increases in the cost of living because the federal wage has only risen three times in the past three decades. So when you point that out to people, hey, look, we've only had three minimum wage increases in the past 30 years. People look at that and go, holy crap. So you have gone that long without getting a raise in the minimum wage, seven twenty-five an hour. Well, we got to do something. We obviously got to raise that wage. Okay. Now, what's the least persuasive argument? Well, this is one that progressives like me have used a lot. Reducing inequality. Well, it turns out the least persuasive argument to raising the minimum wage is reducing income inequality. Now, again, I think that's a result of our very work-centered culture, right? Very like, no, 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 if you, you got to work. Like, yeah, if you work, we'll help you out. But if you don't work, then you're lazy. Well, of course, that's, that's wrong, but... That is unfortunately, uh, look, most people have bought into that conservative narrative. Um, and so they're not swayed by the message of income inequality or poverty. Now, it, unfortunately, again, that's how the American people feel, uh, feel about this. So we're going to have to try and use the argument that's the most effective to get our policy goals. So, look, that argument being we should raise the minimum wage, we should raise it to a living wage, because that will help people who work live a better life and be able to contribute to the economy more. Unfortunately, that's, that's the framing that I believe that we need to take on this issue. Um, until, of course, people start to come around to the idea that, hey, maybe this massive amount of income inequality is also terrible, and we need to do something about it. And look, raising the wage will do something about income inequality as well. But overall, the poll kind of shows that, like most of their arguments, and uh, most of the conservative arguments on, on the economy, for example, most Americans don't seem to be buying it, um, with the exception of one argument that seems to be testing better than the others. Now, uh, what, which argument is that? Well, we go back to the one that I made earlier. Uh, business will, will close. But wait a minute. As I mentioned before, most Americans would be willing to accept a pay, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, increase in the costs to pay for that pay increase. So again, that wiped out that argument. And look, that argument was never true to begin with, and they've known it all along, the people making that argument. In fact... In-depth analysis has shown that raises have not resulted in restaurants closing or laying off workers. Now, they studied this in places that have actually raised uh, wages. You have not seen that loss of employment. In fact, the most comprehensive study to date looked at 137 different uh, wage hikes in the minimum wage, and they found that, quote, a very clear indication that there was a reduction in the number of workers reporting a wage below the new minimum However, we also find clear increase in the number of jobs paying at or above the new minimum, leaving total employment essentially unchanged. Their baseline specification shows that in the five years following the minimum wage increase, average wages of affected workers rose by 7%, while employment of affected workers rose by a statistically insignificant 3.0%. Basically, no change. No gigantic job losses. And yet, you have income gains, which is better for the community because guess what? The people now working have more money to spend in the economy. And that actually helps create more jobs. Fascinating. So look, um, again, this poll is incredible um, because it shows that the American people... They're ready for a ways, uh, I'm sorry, raise. Um, they're ready to, uh, 
or I should say they're willing to accept higher costs in order to give that raise. And they're not buying the conservative arguments against the raise anymore. So America, it's, it's pretty clear. Americans are ready to, uh, to increase the wage. So let's do it already. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.